Welcome back to another video for IB Environmental Systems and Societies. Today, we're going to go through the first part of topic 8.1, human population dynamics. The big idea here is that we have a variety of models and indicators we use to quantify or measure the way that human populations change. The example on the screen are called age sex pyramids. We'll do a, quite a bit of work evaluating and analyzing those. The model you see here on the screen is called the Demographic Transition Model, or DTM for short. If you're taking IBESS, you may encounter this model in your geography class, or you may have had it previously in an individuals and societies class. What this shows is how different factors, such as birth and death rates, impact the way that human populations grow and change over time. The demographic tools that you need to be able to use for topic 8.1 are the crude birth rate, the crude death rate, the total fertility rate, the doubling time, and the natural increase rate. Very simply, the crude birth rate is simply the number of births per thousand people. Note, it's not per thousand women, it's per thousand people. In this graph, you can see a very clear trend here. Starting in the 1950s, there were approximately 35, 37 births per thousand people. By the time we get to the current era, that level is closer to 17 births per thousand people. This is a falling crude birth rate, and we can infer several things about society from that information. We'll get to that later. The crude death rate, just like the crude birth rate, is a simple measure of the number of deaths per thousand people. On this graph, also showing the demographic transition model, you can see that in early stages of the transition, both the crude death rate and the crude birth rate are quite high. Initially then, the death rate starts to fall. That's usually the first sign of a change in socioeconomic development status of a nation. The birth rate remains high typically because culturally people have become used to needing to have many children because many children frequently died. It's only after a sustained period of time in which fewer children are dying that the birth rate begins to decline as well. The fertility rate is the number of children an average woman has during her lifetime. I believe in Niger, it's currently around seven. The total fertility rate is a more nuanced statistic. It's the average number of children that would be born alive to a woman or a group of women during her lifetime if she were typical. So it's a statistical measure. The fertility rate is based on past data. The total fertility rate is based on past and future predictions. The total fertility rate, as you can see here, predominantly this big, bright red and orange zone, Sub-Saharan Africa, Afghanistan, parts of the Middle East, significantly high fertility rates. The cool blue colors reflect low fertility rates, and those generally correlate with places where populations are either steady or beginning to decline. The doubling time, as you might guess by its name, is simply the number of years it takes for the population of a given country to double. It's related to the natural increase rate. The faster a population is growing, the shorter the doubling time. If a population is growing slowly, it takes longer for the population to double. So it's simply divide 70 by a number called the natural increase rate. The natural increase rate is simply the difference between the crude birth rate and the crude death rate. So if you have the CBR, the birth rate, and the CDR, the death rate, you can calculate the natural increase rate by simple subtraction. Then from that, you can calculate the doubling time by taking the number 70 and dividing it by that difference. Pretty straightforward. You may be asked to explain the relative values of the crude birth rate, crude death rate, total fertility rate, doubling time, and the natural increase rate. How do each of these impact the total population? As long as the birth rate and the death rate are relatively equal, you'll have times where the population is relatively stable. If the death rate, which you can see here in this green curve, if the death rate begins to exceed the birth rate, the population will decline. If the birth rate exceeds the death rate, 
the population will increase. So the difference between these two lines here is the natural increase rate. In early stages of the demographic transition model, you have high birth rates and high death rates. In the second stage of the demographic transition, we see falling death rates while birth rates remain high. In the third stage, birth rates begin to decline and approach those of the death rates. So the growth, the total growth or the natural increase rate of the population begins to slow down. In the fourth stage, which we see in well-developed, more economically developed countries or MEDCs, we have relatively low birth rates and relatively low death rates. Therefore, we have stable populations. And where the human population may go into the future is still unknown. It's still unpredictable. But in some very highly developed nations, such as Japan, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, we're beginning to see death rates that exceed birth rates and shrinking populations. Probably one of the, probably one of the most common tools that you'll see when dealing with human populations are these age sex pyramids. And you should be able to relate the shapes of these pyramids to the different stages here in the demographic transition model. So this stage one, where you have rapid growth, okay, you have a very high birth rate, which you can see by the very wide base. And because it has a narrow top, it, it narrows quite quickly. That also indicates that there's a fairly high crude death rate. In stage two, this slow growth that correlates right here, where you still have a relatively high birth rate, but a declining death rate. So people are beginning to live longer, but the birth rates are still high. In stage three, right, where the birth rates begin to approach those of the death rates, we have a population that is stabilizing. And so here, as you can see, where you have these sides that are fairly straight or vertical, that indicates that more and more people are living to an older age. So the death rates are definitely declining. In stage four, here it's got the question mark. That's the section down here, actually, where the birth rates are now fewer or lower than they were previously. So here there were a lot of births and over here, because of the width of this area, it's lower births. This population is aging. There are fewer young people to replace the old people. I've got some worksheets available on my website if you want to check those out to help you work through this analysis. As usual in ESS, you may be asked to discuss the effectiveness or use of models. These age sex pyramids, the demographic transition models, they are models, they have strengths, they have weaknesses. That's the type of discussion and evaluation you may be asked to do on your ESS exam. That's it for today. I hope you found it helpful. I'll be back soon with the follow-up part of this video where we go through the rest of topic 8.1 and we look at the factors affecting those human populations. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel, give it a like and help me grow the audience to reach more ESS students around the world. Happy learning.